Okay, time to get our hands dirty with the Spider Monkey API. First of all, I'll give you a little introduction about the stuff you can do with it. Then I'll build a client server relationship. And then I'll be sending messages from the server periodically and update the uh, frames per second text on the client. Okay, so, first of all, we've got a file, a project, a basic game. Let's call this networking tutorials Gamza. I'm going to go to my source packages folder, the my game package, open up main.java. And I'm going to rename this to client main. Actually, it would be pretty easy if I start off with the server. Because you need a server for clients to connect to. If you make a client and there's nothing to connect to, it won't work. So I'll do the server first. Um, and then I'm going to create a few utility uh, methods um, in a utility class which are then going to be used by both the server and the client. Um, so I'm going to create a new file, Java class. We we'll call this UT for utilities, uh, networking. So networking utilities. This up a bit. And first thing I'm going to need in here is going to be the uh, Port number. It's it's port. I'm just going to use like six thousand. Uh, the range you're allowed to use, I think, uh, one to two thousand. I think is reserved. I'm not too sure, but you can go all the way up to uh, like fifty-five thousand. Whatever. Um, 16 bits can hold. I figure it's, it's around there. So that port number I'm going to share between the client and the server. So I'll just store it here. Um, so I'm going to create a server. No, no. Create that as a instance variable. Server. Control Shift I to import server object. With server class, so I'm going to instantiate that in simple init app. So yeah. use the network uh, class, create server static methods with ports, and just say UT networking. It um, throws exceptions, so I need to try and catch that. I need to start the server. First of all, I need to make the app start in headless mode, which means um, that it's not going to draw any graphics, it's not going to display any windows or anything. It just so you can still use the scene graph in the same way you would, you just won't be able to see anything. Because you don't really care about what the server sees. Maybe if you're debugging or testing you will, but when you deploy your server, you're not going to be seeing what it's doing. So you don't want to have to waste resources on it. Um, I've never used simple windows, so let's get it out. And okay, so I need a few utility networking public static methods. The first one I need is an initialize an initializer, which is going to declare any serializable uh, messages I'm going to be sending. Uh, so initialize. Serializable. 
Register class. I haven't made my message message class yet, so I need to do that first. So you create a message based on the abstract message class, which um, controls the data in which you send to a, um, a server or a client. So that's the class that's going to be serialized into a format in which you can send it through the internet and then the uh, re recipient can unserialize it and get the object out. So I'm, I need to serialize a string object in a message class. And the first thing is you need to declare it as serializable. serializable. Close shift I to import it. And public class. So we'll call this network message. It needs to extend abstract message. Import it. Sure, that was so. There's a mess there, I think I need to I don't know where You need to have a um, default constructor. can't remember why you need it, but you always need it if you're going to serialize something across a network in the Spider Monkey engine API. I'm going to create a constructor which is going to take the string I want to send across. Just put a message. Create an instance the object the message as well. So set that message to the message I'm going to send. And I'll have a get message function. It's going to return that message. Register this class, class, and I need to call it initialize serializable to both the server and the client because they're going to be running as separate programs. Um, but in, in this instance, they're going to be running them both on the same machine, but they don't have to be, they can be somewhere else. And I need to then create a, another public static object of and I'll create a new a whole new static class for this. It's not really to do with networking as such. Um so create geons Box. We'll return our geometry. Then here I'm going to we'll use the same material, all of the boxes and the same box mesh. So yeah, import with control shift I get the structure. Then initializes these. Asset manager. I'm just going to use the um, unshaded material definition. And if you want to learn about that, you can look at my shaded tutorial as I just wrote. Obviously, asset, asset manager doesn't exist, so. We'll pass in some application reference so that I can get the asset manager. Click on that, don't get that. Application get asset manager. I'm going to create the box mesh. Put it at the origin, an object space. And just give it. 
part where it filled that for one unit, which is equivalent to one meter. And then and create box class. Create box um, method, sorry. Yeah, create a box geometry. Just give it a name and box. And the mesh tool. Set the material. So that, and then return the box. So, oh no, this doesn't need to be. Static, so I'm going to be creating the um, create geometry ob object each time on the client and the server. I could make them static classes if I really wanted to, but I won't. So new create geoms and call it pressure file. Great box. You can touch that box in the root node. I need to initialize the serializables. So that's UT network and initialize serializables. I've made it headless, so I'm going to graphics. Get the server.